So let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. We're back with the Hourglass Podcast, where family law and psychology intersect. I'm your host, David Glass, a certified family law specialist, former psychologist, and the author of Moving On, Redesigning Your Emotional, Financial, and Social Life After Divorce. We're here to do all we can to help those going through a breakup or divorce find ways to make the trauma of it all a little bit easier to deal with, more understandable, smoother, and we like to help people find the motivation and inspiration to move on. How? By continuing to share advice and insights from a variety of experts, specialists who are regarded as the best in their respective fields. Our hot topic today is narcissism. On our show today is licensed marriage and family therapist, Sharon Paycar, clinical director and owner of Sherman Oaks Therapy and Wellness. One of her main areas of expertise is dealing with narcissistic partners and ex-partners. Now, Sharon, did I leave out anything uh, about your background or your experience? Um, I'm actually a licensed marriage and family therapist that specializes in narcissistic abuse recovery. That's absolutely correct. I'm also a certified schema therapist and certified clinical trauma professional as well. Okay, let's get into it. I've got a list of questions for you. So first off, how do you recognize a narcissist, especially at the outset of a new relationship? You know, David, it can be hard to recognize at the outset. Uh, depending on the type of narcissist, you may or may not be able to assess if you're dealing with a narcissistic individual. Uh, depending on the, the type of narcissist and the spectrum of which they fall, because as we know, narcissists fall on a spectrum. Right. And so if you have a narcissist that's more covert, we may find that the relationship starts out very natural. Someone is presenting as interested in you, they're sharing about their traumas, they appear vulnerable and open and transparent about their past. Or we may find that we're dealing with more of an overt narcissist that has more of these grandiose gestures of love. They take you on these lavish vacations and buy you all these gifts and promise you a lifetime of uh, this fairy tale love story. So it really depends on the initial kind of presentation of a narcissist where you may or may not be able to assess that that's what you're dealing with. Right. But at, over time, that's, there's something that switches. And then we find ourselves in this new cycle of the relationship. Because narcissistic abuse relationships tend to be cyclical. And so the initial cycle we call the idealization stage. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere between six to 12 weeks, we find ourselves in a new state. We're dealing with someone who's very different now. And this is what we call the devaluation stage where maybe you're not as important anymore. Mm -hmm. Those gifts kind of, they stop. Right. Uh, you're dealing with this different person that maybe even has this contempt and anger or rage towards you at times. They're criticizing you more. Um, that attention and that kind of like object of their affection, you feel like you, that what happened? Right. So there's a big switch then that happens. And that's where we could start to be more aware of what we're dealing with because that big switch mm -hmm. is where we kind of start to question, wait, what happened? So I think during that stage, it becomes more apparent when there's this stark difference between the person that came and started this relationship with you and then this person that you have now. Right, and why is it, why is it so difficult to recognize this narcissism sometimes, it's certainly not until 12 weeks, but maybe even until, until the end of the relationship? It's a really good question. And having experienced it myself, mm -hmm. I feel that either initially at the get go, you don't really have an education of narcissism or narcissistic behaviors. We just kind of live in the world and then we become faced with such a relationship. And then that's where we learn about these relationships and these personalities. It could be that um, we have families of origin that kind of resemble these kinds of personalities where we maybe felt unimportant 
um, at times and then, you know, like the best child in the family. So there may be dynamics that are similar from families of origin. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like I say it's comfortably uncomfortable because right. we know what it feels like, but yet it doesn't feel good to be in this kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we may find that, um, you know, we may believe that it was us that caused that switch in mm -hmm. the person. Right, and that narcissist is really feeding us that story. I wouldn't have yelled at you if you didn't do blah, blah, blah. You know, and so we tend to maybe believe that it was us that created that switch. And if we showed up better and we did something different, that maybe that, that person wouldn't be become abusive towards us. Right. So there can be a lot of different reasons why it's hard to recognize these. I, I do think it's also important to add that culturally, Narcissism can be such a, um, a norm where uh, empathy is not really valued, especially in men. Mm -hmm. um, emotional vulnerability is weak. Right. Apologizing is not something we do. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in a culture where a lot of the males in particular behave in this way, it can be your norm. Right. So you don't think of it as a personality disorder mm -hmm. when, you know, culturally speaking, that is a norm and that's acceptable. Yeah. And so um, uh, I understand from a lot of my clients, it's extremely hard to get yourself out of a narcissistic relationship. Why is it so hard? It's incredibly difficult because of a variety of reasons. Um, primarily, we find that the narcissist presented this world, this life that you, you want, you wanted and you were hoping for and they fed that hope. Yeah. And so you really wanna believe in those really good high highs of the relationship that you can wait and that you would be able to get access to that again. And so a lot of times we find that hope is a big reason why people mm. end up continuing. Fear can be another reason. Fear of the consequences of leaving. The narcissist has threatened that if you leave, right. this and that's going to happen. Um, fear of a lifestyle change. Financially, a lot of times uh, survivors are dependent upon the narcissist and yeah. the narcissist has set that up that mm. way. Um, there could be guilt, you know, breaking up the family. Um, there could be, again, financial reasons why you don't have the means to leave. Um, there, again, cultural and societal judgments on divorce and leaving, breaking up the family. Uh, a lot of times we hear ch the fear of uh, the children being alone with the narcissist. Right. Which, right. you know, as you know, tends to be the case often when you are divorced, you need to split custody. Sure. So um, there can be a lot of reasons why it's hard to leave, um, but mainly we find hope and fear, the emotional reasons why it's hard to leave. Okay, so if you're working with a patient in your practice and they're trying to get out uh, of a narcissistic relationship, what are you trying to get, how are you trying to get them to that right place? Great question. Initially, when clients come to the practice, in, in our practice, they're confused. They don't even know what they're dealing with. Sometimes they do know, and they've done a lot of research and education and gaining the education of like what they're dealing with. And, and that's a great place because they come to you and they kind of just go, okay, here's what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. Help. What do I do? And with the client that doesn't really know, we want to educate them. We want to provide them with a lot of information, books, videos, whatever we can get our hands on to, get, to help the client gain clarity, to come out of that cognitive dissonance that also keeps them in these relationships. That difficulty of, of making sense of this really great person at times versus this really, uh, the Jekyll and Hyde dynamic, mm -hmm. right? Where the really evil kind of cruel behavior at other times. And so we want to help them gain clarity and learn more about what they're dealing with and figure out if they want to stay or go. You know, we, we never really want to push them to stay or go. Right. Because uh, they may not be ready and then we may lose them, you know. And the worst thing for a narcissistic abuse survivor is to be alone and mm -hmm. isolated in dealing with this. Sure. So, you know, we want to help them gain that clarity. We want to help them come to a place of getting to decide what they want to do, what works best for them. 
if they want to leave, we want to help them kind of get their ducks in a row, work with someone like yourself in setting up a plan mm -hmm. for leaving. They, we don't want them to just, you know, leave um, right. impulsively as that could be bad for them in the future. Um, and then also we want to, if they do want to stay, we want to help them to manage those expectations of this person to not sit in the hope and waiting and, and that belief that they can change things, that they can get, get access to that person again, that good side. Right. We want to help them to really accept and manage those expectations of change because oftentimes that change is not, it's not stable. If there even is a change, it's not stable in the mm -hmm. narcissist. And then long term, if the client wants to stay with us on a long term basis and really work through the deeper schemas that cause them to be the perfect match for a narcissist, mm -hmm. we find that to be incredibly important because often we find that we don't just attract one narcissist and entertain that relationship. We find ourselves in multiple right. narcissistic relationships or even narcissistic family dynamics and friendships and other, other parts of our lives. If we look around as a survivor, you'll often see that there are narcissists all over in your life in different areas and circles that maybe you've been engaging in as well. Yeah, I, I tell my clients that divorce is your second chance at happiness. It's not just happiness in the relationship and finding a new relationship. It's really a chance to look at everything around you and, and what can you learn from the mistakes you made and try not to make them a second time or a third time. Yes, absolutely. It's so important to, to look within ourselves too as survivors to find the parts of us that engaged in a nurse, for example, survivors may have a tendency of subjugating their needs or mm -hmm. sacrificing their needs. And for an entitled narcissist, that is the perfect fit. Right. So you're absolutely right. In creating those personal changes, we can really change our entire future and our lives for the better. Now, taking a slightly different tack, uh, is there any opportunity for a narcissist to change themselves through therapy? I, you know, I know they don't typically come into therapy and say, I'm a narcissist, how do I fix myself? Is there any hope for, for someone who finds themselves uh, narcissistic to change themselves? That is a really good question and it's a big question. And it's honestly hard for me to answer because we, I have colleagues that work primarily with narcissists using schema therapy. Mm -hmm. And schema therapy has been, it's, it's an evidence-based practice for personality disorders. And th that perspective is that, you know, if there's leverage and there is a reason that the narcissist does not want to lose this relationship, then maybe there can be some change. Mm -hmm. However, we have other colleagues in the field that say absolutely not. The change is sort of like a rubber band effect. And during times of stress or even times when they feel very supplied and they don't need you, they're going to revert back to their abusive right. you know, ways. So, you know, it's, it's a tough question. And I, I personally think it depends on where a narcissist falls on the spectrum of their narcissism and how much accountability, authentic accountability they're willing to take for their actions. But often we found, you know, we have narcissists that come to our practice as well and they'll show up when things aren't going well. Their partner's not letting them in the bedroom, for example, but then as soon as they get what they want, they're right. out of therapy. So consistency is not typically what we see with narcissists. Right. And I mean, it, I think it boils down to the old joke. Um, how many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Right. And the answer is only one, but the light bulb really has to want to change. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for helping us get a better understanding of narcissism. You've helped us cover a lot of ground today and we really appreciate it. Um, before we sign off, can you tell us how people can find you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our website is thesshermanoakstherapist.com. We are a group private practice where we have licensed and pre-licensed individuals who primarily learn and practice uh, narcissistic abuse recovery. Um, and we also provide co international coaching as well for clients outside of the states that we're licensed in. And they can also find me on Instagram, Let's Talk Divorce, and Facebook as well. Great. Thank you for having me. Such Great to have you here today. Thank you, David. As we sign off today, I want to bring attention to a song, as we often do. 
one that usually references time and romantic relationships in some way. This one, by Elton John and Bernie Taupin, is obviously about saying goodbye to someone who was toxic. Throughout the lyric, it implies that the person who sings it stayed far too long in that relationship, likely with a narcissist. It's one of those songs you can sing loudly while you're driving alone in your car or at a karaoke bar. So have at it. I hope you will consider this as your go-to song as you move away from your narcissist and prepare for a new and healthy romantic relationship. That's what you want, right?